But Joe Biden is struggling. There is no doubt in anybody's mind. Everybody sees it. The media mob and the Democratic Party may try to ignore it. It is now official, and it is beyond alarming if we are going to be honest and truthful as a country. Frankly, it is even hard to watch. The confusion, the inability to finish thoughts, the never-ending daily gas, the bursts of outrage and anger should concern every American tonight, as it looks like he will be the Democratic nominee, and this should be regardless of any political view. We now, on multiple occasions, he has now forgotten Barack Obama's name. He recently confused his wife for his sister. He called Super Tuesday, Super Thursday. He mixed up Chris Wallace for Chuck Todd, which is an insult to Chris Wallace. He said that 150 million Americans died from gun violence. Not true. He told the crowd in South Carolina he was running for the Senate. And I can go on and on. As a matter of fact, well, we have examples just from the past few weeks. We have our list. It's ongoing. You can read it at the side of your screen. Now, he cannot uh, control his agitation. And this became apparent again earlier today. Totally enraged Joe Biden when a construction worker at an auto plant dared to ask him about this clip. We're going to show you the clip first because it turns out that the construction worker at the auto plant was right about Biden talking about taking assault rifles. Here's the clip that proves the guy is right, which we'll play in a second. So the, to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. The fact of the matter is they should be illegal, period. Illegal, period. He said it. So maybe Biden, again, just doesn't remember saying that. He only said it in August of 2019. Maybe he doesn't remember that he recently anointed Bozo Beto O'Rourke to lead his gun confiscation policy. Remember, Bozo is the same guy who said... Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15s, or in Joe's case, 14s. Yes, maybe Biden doesn't remember, or maybe he just can't control his temper. Whatever the case may be, what I'm about to show you should be concerning to every American. This is one incident of many incidents that have been taking place. Take a look. problem is that construction worker at an auto plant was a thousand percent right. His point is valid. And Joe says he's full of beep and he wants that guy's vote. And then aggressively, he shushes a staffer. Now watch this part. Um, and that's not all. Take a look. Biden comparing the Second Amendment to yelling fire in a crowded room, uses an absurd liberal talking point, well, my sons love hunting, and then says he's not trying to take away any guns when he's on tape saying that exact same thing, which then he immediately contradicts. Watch this. And all my life, I thought that I owned AR-15s. I didn't know they were 14s. What you just saw was the front runner of the Democratic Party, their likely presidential candidate, shushing uh, a woman that appears to be on his staff, by the way, who kind of seems to be trying to help him get out of another troubling situation. Great way to treat people trying to save you from yourself, Joe. And then sticking his finger in the face of a construction worker at an auto plant, calling him a horse's ass, saying that he's full of bleep. And according to one CBC reporter on the scene, Biden even threatened to slap the man. And on top of it all, when well, he just heard it, he can't dis distinguish between an AR-15 and 14. I don't have 14s. I have 15s. The staff tried to rush him out of the room. Shush, get out of the way. Normally, maybe not a big deal. But with Joe, it is now cumulatively a huge deal. This type of agitated behavior is part of an increasing, disturbing pattern. In the past few months, he's called, let's see, one voter fat and a damn liar, called the young woman a lying, dog-faced pony soldier, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We have tape of all of it. Take a look. I was a Democratic caucus. You ever been to a caucus? 
No, you haven't. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. You said you were, but you're, you're now you gotta be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're a damn liar, man. That's not true. And no one has ever said that. And you wanna check my shape on? Let's do push ups together, man. Let's do let's run. Let's do whatever you wanna do. Let's take a nice detail. You said I set up my son to work in an oil company. Isn't that what you said? I get your word straight, Jack. But look, fat, uh, look, here's the deal. We gotta stop building and replacing pipelines. We gotta go vote for someone else. Go vote for someone else. New campaign slogan. Now, does that seem like the behavior of a grounded, balanced, lucid individual? Because Joe 30330, or on other occasions, Joe 233, well, I better get it right, 30330 is running for the hardest the most demanding, the most powerful job in the world. There is no harder job than being the president of the United States of America. So I'll ask again, does the 77-year-old guy we are watching every day now, does he have the stamina? Does he have the strength? Does he have the focus? Does he have the alertness? Does he have the mental focus, focus the mental toughness, and even the mental stability to be president? It's a fair question. Is this how he's gonna treat world leaders? Quid pro quo Joe kind of looks pretty frail to me. Is he going to invite Putin to a fight or a push-up contest or even a little rocket man? Because I think, frankly, anyone would be able to kick his ass. Now, it's so bad that the Biden campaign, they are now trying to cover for quid pro quo Joe. They're trying to keep Joe out of the public spotlight. In other words, they are hiding him from the world. A great campaign strategy. Hide your candidate. We can't trust what he's going to do or say. This is a disaster. According to the Washington Post, during his rally in St. Louis this weekend, Biden spoke for a whopping seven minutes. Seven minutes. Oh, I could see people waiting online for hours to hear that. And Kansas City spoke for, wow, 12 minutes. And his longest speech of the weekend, it didn't hit the 15-minute mark. His big rally tonight in Ohio was canceled after the campaign cited coronavirus concerns, although he will speak at a separate event in Philadelphia. And by the way, like father, like son, Hunter Biden, he's using the coronavirus as an excuse. Remember, he denied paternity in that case down in Arkansas. Now he's trying to skip out on a child support hearing in Arkansas because of the virus. I would argue it's probably because he doesn't want to turn over his finances. That would expose him in the Burisma case, and the China case, and whatever other countries was paying him millions with zero experience. And by the way, Arkansas currently has zero cases of corona. We'll get back to quid pro quo Joe right now. He cannot be trusted to speak for more than seven minutes by his own campaign. And that's seven minutes with a teleprompter. And he wants to lead the free world. Let's pause. Let's take that in. Let's think about that. Now, of course, when quid pro quo Joe actually does hold an event for more than seven minutes, it's a struggle. Every single time, a struggle is guaranteed to ensue. For example, Monday's rally in Detroit became totally derailed after an interruption from a few anti-NAFTA protesters. Take a look. You know, I didn't go, you, are you with Donald Trump? That's all right, let him go. It's not, it's not a Trump rally. It's not a Trump rally. Let him go. Let, let him go. Let him go. The Bernie bros are here. Let him go. Folks. Folks, let him go. That's okay. Herein lies another serious problem for quid pro quo Joe. He can't hide from what is a real horrific track record. Look at your screen. Here are a few of Joe's top accomplishments. Let's see. NAFTA disastrous trade deal. Oh, giving Mullahs and Iran the chance death to America. Yep, let's give them uh, 150 billion in cash and other currencies. Remember Obamacare? He brags about Obamacare. Millions lost their doctors, millions lost their plans. We have 37% of the country that only has one exchange, Obama exchange care option. That's it. And our premiums, average family, did you save $2,500 on average per year? No, we're all paying almost 200% more. And let's not forget the horrific economic track record. I tell it often, 13 million more Americans, food stamps, 8 million more in poverty, lowest labor participation rate since the 70s. Then, of course, we had the lowest home ownership rate in 50 years. We had the worst recovery since the 40s, more debt than 43 administrations before them combined. Not a good record compared to 8 million new jobs under Trump. 
all new trade deals. We got the wall being built. We got promises made and kept on all those trade deals. And guess what? America's doing better than ever. Record low unemployment for every demographic in this country. Now, by the way, an attack against the administration over a virus, apparently that's fair game. And don't forget that around 17,000 Americans, yeah, they died from H1N1. That was the swine flu virus. That was handled, you got it, under Biden Obama. Now, Biden also voted in favor of the Iraq war, but he did an interview and he told Lawrence O'Donnell over at MSDNC, state-run conspiracy television, he did vote for a war to prevent a war from happening. He voted for a war to make a war from happening. Excuse me? Take a look. The reason I voted the way I did was to try to prevent a war from happening because, remember, the threat was to go to war. The argument was because Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. So he said that I need to be able to get the Security Council to agree to send in inspectors to put pressure on Saddam to find out whether or not he's using, is producing nuclear weapons. And at the time, I said, that's your reason. All right, I get it. That was, the, the rationale was, that's the way to not go to war because I didn't believe he had those nuclear weapons. I voted for a war so we wouldn't have a war. Okay, now it doesn't matter how short Biden's speeches get. He can't hide from his horrific track record. He cannot hide from the fact you're not getting a billion unless you fire the prosecutor investigating my zero experience son, Hunter, who, by the way, was paid millions. He can't hide the investigation now ongoing. It is happening in Ukraine. Donald Trump had nothing to do with it. It's also happening with Senator Ron Johnson in the U.S. Senate. And by the way, how many other millions of dollars did zero experience Hunter make there? That will be fair game in the next 238 days. And he sure as hell can hide the increasing amount of, um, let's be charitable, senior moments on the campaign trail. And a potential head-to-head -head matchup with President Trump. No stone will be left unturned. You, the American people, will be the ultimate jury. In 238 days, you have the opportunity to shock the world again. Here now, with reaction, Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer, former White House Chief of Staff, writes Priebus. Good to see you.